was trying to do this one handed as I was putting the inroads on this field. It wasn't quite cooperating. How's everyone doing today? Hello, Victor. I wish I could zoom this camera out more. I feel like it's really focused on me. I'd like for you guys to be able to see the planner a little bit more. What do I think about pace? Everyone make good equipment. Service is going to be one of the biggest differentiating factors on that. I will say that case equipment is not quite as expensive as John Deere equipment. Not that that's a good or bad thing. You can grow a good crop with a red tractor, green tractor, purple tractor. You can make one of those. Four-year-old tractor, brand new tractor, it's all the same. They turn diesel fuel into power. Exact Emerge Planner. An exact Emerge Planner is was developed by Deere within the last, or released by Deere within the last three or four years. It's a planner that uses electric delivery systems on the row unit, so every row disc is controlled by an electric motor. And there's also an electric motor controlling a delivery brush that picks the seed off of the seed plate that's being spun by the electric motor and then delivers it down to the ground, into the furrow. One of the biggest issues you have with speed is not only getting an accurate population, but when you're driving very fast, the row units are probably a foot to a foot and a half, so 12 to 16 inches from the seed control point to where it hits the soil. And in this planter, it's just a drop straight down, whereas Exact Emerge has the delivery brush. I believe that Precision Planning offers a product, a uh, speed tube maybe, that at least covers the delivery part. I'm not sure about the simulation, the population control. That's in the unit itself. Very expensive planners, but they're good planners. If you were planning to come with this planner, which I believe is a max emerge, maybe not, you wouldn't want to go anything over five, half, six miles an hour. Corn's very sensitive to population, stand count, seed spacing. Whereas an exact emerge, you can push them 10 miles an hour, no problem. I've seen guys run them 12, 13 miles an hour and plant just as well as a 10. That's some serious that's some serious acreage. I talk a little bit more about that in one of my earlier planning videos. If you can make a 60-foot planter go 13 miles an hour, you're planting straight line efficiency 100 acres an hour. Obviously, it's not that perfect. You have to account for filling up the planter, moving farm to farm. Let's see if I can turn this a little bit. Let's do it. Show you what's going on. easy to know where the edge of your planter is. Just drive it straight. Get a little bit far off there. I'd rather have them too close to the ditch than not close enough. Less room for weeds, the better. Yeah, Henry, live action. Daytime.
time too. You can actually see what's going on. I'm putting a lot of faith in this iPad mount. I got my iPad Pro up here on the screen. How many acres do you farm? Not enough, Larry. No such thing as too many. Hello from Sweden. Hello, Jonas, if that's how you say that. Hi from New Zealand. Hello, Ashley. Any... I'm not sure what that word is. Tempo. Is tempo the... in the dust like this, these sensors and the sea tubes just get a little bit obstructed by dust. 
going to start to show a little on my monitor that's been doing this whole field. Well, I've got to shut your section control off. You have to back up a little bit because the planter knows I planted there, but it has a delay in starting. So I have to overlap it here. suction cup holding our, our iPad on. You've got about three seconds before your auto steer kicks off. So you gotta be quick. What's the weather, Larry? Right now, it's a balmy, check my watch, 72 degrees, a high of 74, very windy, extremely windy. See how fast the dust is coming off the planter here? That's a crosswind the way we're planting right now. Supposedly, they're calling for a good rain shower tonight and then over the next few days. My dad had heard somewhere that I had heard somewhere that there was a chance of up to four inches of rain total through this weekend. That's a lot of rain, especially if that came in one drink. However, it's so dry right now, I think four inches. Would it be as bad of a... This is just giving me anxiety here. My iPad's just dangling. Fix this one. Alright, that's not going anywhere. Four inches over like four or five days at this point, it'd probably be just about what we need. This ground's dry. I'm putting these soybeans in about two inches in the ground, extremely deep, and they're barely even in the moisture. We did work them a little bit more than we normally would. This ground came up really cloudy. Seven miles an hour. 
last year I planted whole farm in 11th gear at like 8 miles an hour. Everything came on fine. What part of central Illinois, Jay asked? I'm in, right now I'm in Windsor, Illinois, just west of Coles County. I believe Windsor is on the northeastern side of Shelby County. I said that just a second ago. The east of Shelbyville, in between Shelbyville and Windsor. For those of you who are familiar with this neck of the woods, I'm from Mattoon, south of Champaign, on 57, 45 minutes or so. Jimmy said, Good morning, hey Jimmy. Went to school for an agri degree, yes, Henry, I did. Crop sciences, the study of crops. Specifically corn, so I mean a little bit of wheat, but we don't do any wheat on our farm. There's wheat around. Zeus says, Except for Northeast Ohio, we're flooded. Wow. Did you guys get a pretty big shower recently? We even had a rain in probably a week at this point. Here's the true question. Do I go back around in reverse or do I go down the field? one of the actual field rows and just hit it from the right side. I always like to plant around the field my right side up next to anything in the
first week of May. Our last field we planted the second week of June. I, I replanted beans in the third week of June. I replanted beans in July. We replanted beans again in July. It was a long year. So I'm not sure how you define the first time, just a couple weeks. that you have individual brakes on your rear tires. So when you get the planter where you want, you just hold your brake, bring the tractor around, and you can make a pretty sharp three-point turn without much trouble. Fieldview or only John Deere Off Center. We tried the demo program of Fieldview last year. It has its place, a lot of really interesting information and analytic tools. I have a hard time seeing how that adds value to your farm unless you're doing some very intricate processes. I'm getting my iPhone. You guys can look that way.
stranger things have happened. When it starts to get loose like this, the mount is not holding. Tyler says, I can go nine miles an hour. That's pretty fast. You're cooking at nine miles an hour. You probably have to wear your seatbelt going that fast. Hello from Western New York. Yes, it's still snowing. Oh. At least you get to use snowmobiles. I don't ever get an opportunity to use a snowmobile. Always gotta find the bright side. thing is being a real rascal. I need to clean the window before I put it up. That's what's going on behind me. once and for all. lucky here after planning and catch 90% of the equipment clean. We'll do it then. The new John Deere tractor have camera mounts built into them. They're nice. Well, I mean, you can literally do whatever you want in this cab. You can put up anywhere there. There's bolts, spots to bolt in, mounting brackets. You see, you can see people with tractors with like 20 different screens and I'm not sure what they're all doing, but I've got two screens I look at. On the new tractors, I would have one screen. I've got a third one, the iPad. I don't really use it that much. I use it, the iPad's actually in the tractor. Last year when we ran Climate field, field View, we had to have an iPad or some kind of tablet in the tractor for the Field View connection device to connect to, send its data to, so it can map.
Tyler's got to go fill up the seat, Tinder. Have fun, Tyler. Stay safe. How many 8R tractors do you have in Belmont? We have two 8Rs, three 9Rs. And that's the majority of our important fleet. We have a lot of utility tractors. Just for mowing, small projects. on farming YouTube to have an equipment tour. How many percent of the acres do your family farm of your family farm do you own or rent? Yeah, that's a interesting question. I say about the family as a whole of our entire farm owns about 80 to 85 percent of it been around for a long time. Michael wants to know, do you go to dirt tracks in Illinois? There are a lot of them. I don't personally. I'm not a huge dirt bike guy. I do enjoy outdoors, ATV, power sports. I got a good friend growing up that his family was very involved in a power sports dealership. And I got to hang out with them and really experience dirt bikes, ATVs, UTVs, all that jazz. I'm more of a big equipment kind of guy. I did have a street bike at one point in time. Yamaha. What was that called? I don't know what it's called. Yamaha street bike. Do you grow any other crops other than corn and soybeans? Nope. We had them for years. At one point in time we did have a little bit of wheat in production, but that was probably 20 years ago. <coughs> Claudia says, very nice equipment, thank you. Nice big fields, yeah, they are. <coughs> yeah, speaking, I thought it was kind of funny, Millennial Farmer put up a story on his Instagram earlier today, and <laughs> it's a question about Warzone. Millennial Farmer put up a story today of him in his like, favorite spot out of the field. It was some kind of terrain that I've never seen before. It looked kind of like a golf course. This is flat, black dirt. Some of the greatest ground you can have for growing corn soybeans. Justin, look at the What are you planting? Hi. Hey, Nathaniel, how are you doing? Get a haircut, hippie. I can't. I wouldn't trust. I wouldn't trust just anyone to take this off of me. This is some thick, curly hair. I need to just put a bowl on it and then just cut around the outside. That look alright with it. Ooh, 
That's a tough one. I think in a typical rock here. That's a really good question. I think about 30 inches. Maybe that's, I don't want to say that's what we'd have in a crop here. I'd honestly have to look that up. I do still have climate on my phone. I don't know if that would be included in a free membership or not. Maybe it's 20 on a crop here. At one point last year, to give you some perspective on the rainfall, we had 10 inches of rain in 10 days. Two of them came in four inch rains. Four inches in like a couple hours. You wanna talk about rain. Now, there's nothing you can do. You do the best you can to put the crop in the ground. You have perfect stands. You get 10 inches of rain in 10 days, you're gonna be replanted. We are running into a fourth dry year in a row. Water is getting rare and the nature You irrigate? Is that what you need water coming from a, a reservoir, a lake? Or like a natural spring? This is a good day. Thank you. Riley wants to know the amount of the acres. This field's over 200 acres I'm in right now.
This is an 8285. It's a couple years old now, probably six or seven years old. We take good care of it. It only has 380 hours on it. That's how much we use it. Do you do any custom farming? No, we don't. Yes, the same guy asked the question. When you land in Warzone, do you land in Cropship Farmland? No, I hate that place. I, if you don't land there at the beginning of the game, don't land there at the end because people are just sitting there camping in the houses. Ask my buddies I play with about that one. Uh, get a phone call from the boss. Hello? soybeans, I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of accuracy and precision in exchange for planting more, for more capacity of driving a little bit faster than it's capable of putting seed in the ground. Engine sound is drowning you out. I'm sorry, I need to pull it. I need to somehow pull it or talk louder. Is it better if I talk like that? but you're already as far away as you could possibly be from me. If I pull you any closer, you're not going to be able to really see much. You're just going to see the tanks on the planter. I can try to put you on the door. There's no quiet spot. There's no quiet spot in the tractor. says, hello, I'm from the UK. Thanks for making the lockdown more bearable. I'm glad I can make your life a little bit more enjoyable, Ian. Thanks for tuning in. Nick says he's planting corn today. Have fun. It's not going to grow in the box, Nick. What's the biggest game changer on your farm in recent years? In terms of general productivity, it was that exact emerge planter. It's phenomenal technology. A lot of things have not changed much. I don't think equipment-wise, we've made leaps and bounds in productivity. Most improvements 
on the farm equipment side, especially on tractors, are more ergonomic and convenient. Very nice interiors, very nice for the operator. However, they've not made huge improvements in fuel efficiency, anything like that. Well, that's, that's not just, they have made leaps and bounds of improvements in exhaust emissions and cleaning them. Whether or not you agree with that is besides the point they have done a good job. It's very inconvenient. They sacrifice some power in terms in, for a cleaner product tip or a cleaner exhaust. Georgia Farm Boy Jack says we have an 8400 with 17,000. Did I read that? Is that a typo? 17,000 hours? Are you sure that's not 1700? Any plans for an 8RX version? Says Lux. <laughs> not anytime soon. I'd rather buy. I'd rather buy farm ground than buy depreciable assets. Farm equipment is not an investment. It's an operating expense. Jonas wants to, he wants to know, do you have any irrig irrigation? Is it a good investment for corn and soybeans? That's a great question. Someone asked that the other night when I was live streaming. It depends on the cost of your ground, your grounds, where your ground struggles. If your ground's a sandy soil that has no problem draining water, and drains water almost too good, then irrigation is probably gonna pay if there's a water source nearby aquifer, a river, a reservoir, something that you can tap into, or even just a well. We have the water table to run irrigation. I don't think it would be an issue. However, we are rain fed here to an extent that we can grow just as good of crops as some people can on their irrigation farms without irrigation. If you're dealing with a very, a very sensitive crop, something that you want to ensure does not run out of moisture, then you, you want irrigation. You get out of California, they're not running anything but either, they probably want more of a drip irrigation, but. You have to roll the crops in to find the seabeds like we do in the UK. We do not personally do that. There are farmers in the United States in certain regions that do roll their seabeds. Raymond says, we have the new 8RX. That's really cool. I've heard that the people who have used them, even the people who were not provided one purely to, you know, not for entertainment purposes, but people, farmers who've used them on their farm, have said that they are some of the nicest tractors they've ever driven. However, $500,000, $600,000 for a tractor, guys, is it really saving you that much money is a question, or worth that expense? There comes a time when you have to differentiate between what you want and what you need. There's a certain point of efficiency where you need so much. We need, you know, these newer tractors that are powerful to run some of this high-tech equipment. But do we need an 8RX tractor with the quads on? If you've got money to spend and you don't know what to spend it on, sure, why not? It looks sweet. Georgia said it is 17,000. That's a lot of hours. That may be more hours than our entire fleet has combined. Probably twice or three times the total hours that our fleet has combined. We have three combines going and we have four planters. Ooh. That's a lot. I feel like it's usually the other way around. Don't you usually need less planters and more combines? Are you farming just corn and soybeans? something else. Most guys here in West Central Missouri lease equipment. I'm sure there are. There's guys in Central Illinois that lease equipment. It depends on where you're at. There's tax advantages to leasing versus buying. You have to deal with, you pay a premium to lease it. However, you don't take some of the risks that you do with owned equipment. It's all expensive. It doesn't matter if you lease it, you buy it. You calculate a payment out per year, it's going to cost you a lot of money on that equipment. And that's just, that's not just deer equipment. I am over by Peoria and Metamora. That's a 
good farm ground over there by Peoria. farmer they've seen that does not wear a hat. I do on occasion wear a hat. You've seen me wear a hat in some of my videos. One, when my hair gets this long, wearing a hat can be kind of challenging and frustrating. And two, it kind of gives me a headache. I know very few farmers that actually, with the exception of my family, I don't know if it's a family thing or what, but most farmers I know do wear a hat. Mostly for the sun. Carlos wants to know you reach the end of the field and raise the planter to turn back around, stop seeding until putting it back in the ground. Oh, you're asking if it stops? Yeah, so I'll show you. See if it let me turn this around. There we go. If you can see right here, I'm sorry, the LED screens kind of flicker. Each one of these green lines at the bottom, each one of these represents a sec 32 row planter. Each, sec each section is four rows, there's eight sections. When that light turns, when I, in this path up here, when I overlap a spot that's already been planted, so these lines right here colored orange have been planted, each swath control unit, so each row control, will shut off as it crosses into that territory. So when I'm on the end, I can actually plant all the way through because the planter stops planting, even though the, the planter's in the ground. So that's how swap it. I could probably show you, but I'll have to be I'll have to be quick. I can kind of do it with one hand. I wish I could zoom out. Here's what I'm working with on the command side. Here's my throttle. I'm running full throttle. Here's my power shift. I've got, if I bump it forward, that bumps me up a gear. If I pull it back, that pulls me down, down a gear. Here's my rear, where my reverse. Backwards is up a gear, forwards is down a gear. This is my three-point control, so it controls this hitch directly here. I shut all the ones I'm not using because I don't want to mess with them. This controls my up and down through the field. It's all I really need. If I'm doing the end rows, I can turn a marker on so I can switch these on, which those are the markers there. I've explained that in the last video somewhere there. Those are the markers there. I control my markers on that one. Three runs one of my vacuums, and then four is running my other vacuum over there. When one's pushed all the way down, it also runs the fan, so you have to make sure it's clicked down. You can see on the display here, I've got one. You see the little gauge lever on one? It's showing that it's all the way forward because it's still providing continuous hydraulic power. And then my three and four are the hydraulics for my vac, as I explained, and see they're clicked down on continuous. That gauge right there means they're running right now, locked into that pressure. And you see two's not doing anything, so it shows no no gauge. So I'll try and I'll try and show you the swath control. Hopefully I don't cause any issues. As I cross at the end here, see my row units just shut off. I lifted the planter up. I like to tap the right brake a little bit, get her around. Turn my auto steer back on, click that, click that down, puts my planter back down. Sorry, it's a little shaky, I'm holding this by hand. As I cross back over, my row units turn green, and we're planting again. It's that simple. Okay, Brendan, sorry, I was trying to answer that last question. Hopefully that answered your question a little bit better, Carlos. Brennan wants to know, where are you? I'm in Windsor, Illinois, west of Mattoon right now, about 15 miles. I don't know if you're familiar with Windsor. It is to the east of Shelbyville, to the southeast, well, south-southeast of, or east-southeast of Sullivan, Illinois. Beginning Shelby, Moultrie County, those counties. Does the auto steer button set cruise control and lower the implement like a challenger? It does not. 
I don't know if that's a functionality in a newer gear tractor. It could be, it could be. I'm really not certain. There is a button here that I can program to, to do like a macro or a, a combination of commands at once. I just do it manually. I run, I don't use cruise control, I just hit it. I'm running 10th gear, full throttle. I hit the auto steer button, I put the planter down. Brendan also wants to know, do any of you guys know Millennial Farmer? Now, who's that? Who's that? I don't know that guy. Do you store most of your grain? Do you bring it to the elevator right away? A little bit of a mix. So this farm I'm at right now is pretty far away, probably, as I just said, 15 miles away from my home farm, maybe 20. We don't have any bin site here. We don't have bin site here. We'll just haul to a local elevator. For the most part, though, we can store quite a bit of our crop. I'd say in total, 300 to 350,000 bushel storage capacity. Not a lot of huge bins, a lot of smaller bins, very convenient. We like to have our bins placed closer to the farm. I'm in the UK, it's currently 20 hours. What is the time here? It is 1400 military time, and that's Central Standard Time, United States. So 2 p.m. Joshua Meyer says hi. Hey, Joshua. That is it. Look, I appreciate it, Mark. If I can help you out, Carlos. We haul all of our corn, but no beans. We also farm. Yeah, every situation is different. And it's not to say you can capture storage gains with marketing decisions if you really want to. That's a whole other can of worms. On most years, there's about a 30 to 40 cent carry in storage. So if you store your crop, there's usually about 30 to 40 cents uh, net to be made. Gross, I'm sorry, gross to be made. You have to consider your storage cost. Look him up. I will sometime. Lux wants to know what are good what are good tillable prices per acre in your area. It's all going to depend on the productivity of the farm ground. I doubt you see anything go under ten thousand dollars an acre. I know that there's a large tract of ground that sold a couple months ago that went for I think it was a six hundred acre chunk of some phenomenal farm ground. I believe the average price was over twelve thousand dollars an acre. So a lot of money, 12,000 US dollars, not Canadian dollars, US dollars. There was a 2,000 acre chunk of ground, also I believe very productive ground, that sold a month ago, sealed bid, the winner was like 10, six an acre, but that's on 2,000 acres. That's like a $20 million purchase of farm ground, plus, $20 million plus. One of the biggest factors affecting the difference in the value of farm ground when it sells regardless of productivity is how bad someone down the road wants it. Some of these farmers will trample each other trying to buy a farm that they farm next to. They don't care if they have to pay $13,000 an acre. If that's what they have to do to outbid someone, they'll do it. Not everyone's that way, but farmers have a lot of pride in their ground. says we have 24 row planters. Brennan, you run in case equipment or you run in deer equipment? Are they exact emergers? I don't know, cases planter, I don't even know what they're called. I've got a friend who runs cases high speed planter and they're phenomenal planters as well. Greetings from Croatia. How's it going? Joshua said I once filled our worst trailer and truck with 101,000 gross. Ooh. DOT who? Again, watching from California, wishing I was home in southeast Minnesota on our family farm.
spreading fertilizer and planting. Yeah, I wish you were there too, Alex. It's hard to it's hard to be away from the farm. Are you gone by choice? Are you stuck there because of the virus? You're just missing home. Lux said we used to cash rent at sixty-five dollars an acre in nineteen ninety-one. Well, where is that at, Lux? And also, nineteen ninety-one was a long time ago. Not no offense. A lot has changed in agriculture in the last thirty years. The value of farming is tremendously higher. There's a lot more money to be made. There's a lot more money involved overall. Landlords are getting a larger cut. Farmers are getting a larger cut. Everyone's getting a larger cut. I guess not everyone can get a larger cut. But everyone's getting a larger total return. There was a period of years from 2006 to 2012 or 2013 during the, especially for corn farmers, with the mandate of the renewable fuel standard production of ethanol, where some farmers were making more money in a year than they had in their whole career. Especially in 2012, we had a massive drought. Some people came out very burned from that. Some people made a lot of money. We run case of beer, says okay. Yeah, I know a lot of people that like a good mix of equipment. Everyone makes good equipment. Does the fan push the seed through the row units? No, it doesn't. The fan, that fan right there, pushes all the seed. Every every row unit seed tube starts right there on the other side of the seed tank. And the fan pushes the seed all the way from there to a unit. At the unit, the, the seed piles up. In that seed, where the seed piles up, the plate is spinning around. And as the plate spins around, it starts to grab seeds. Now, in combination with that plate, you see each side of me, you can't really see that one, but you see right there is a vacuum. Each row unit also has a vacuum hose attached to it, and that vacuum sucks the seed up into the plate. And as the seed comes around, as the as the hydraulic units are spinning the plate, yeah. as the hydraulics are spinning the plates, controlling the population, that vacuum pulls the seed in the plate, it goes all the way around, drops out at the bottom, or drops out into the ground. There's a, a little bit of a descent, just a vertical drop. Is there any other color machinery than green? I've seen everything. It's practically a rainbow machinery. No DOT. Dad killed the truck six times going four miles in town. I'd be afraid that I snapped the trailer in half. You ever seen a picture of a trailer just torn in two? Buck says I'm old. Every farmer's old. I'm just young. Ian wants to know how long will it take to complete the current field? Let's see how many acres we have. We are, we lack about 100 acres, so two and a half, three hours, probably, you always have to round up three and a half hours. So hopefully I'm done by five o'clock. Although when I say that a planter is, you know, can plant 40 acres an hour, 35 acres an hour, that's not a true test of efficiency because much like a NASCAR race or a Formula One, one race or anything, you have to make pit stops. You have to get seed. You have to do everything you need to make sure that the planter can keep running. I have to get out and use the bathroom occasionally. I did it right before we started this. That way I didn't have to stop. I wish I was at home. 
helping and being productive. Well, I'm sorry you're missing out. That's probably a fun, a fun occupation you have. I've been to a Supercross event before. I said earlier in the live stream that I've got a, a buddy and his family are very involved in power sports, so I've got a lot of experience with that from them. Rune says, hello from Norway. Hello from Illinois, Windsor, Illinois. Joshua said, yeah, I started cracking and started to break the hoppers on the trailer down the village. Oh, man. Our trailer, we don't run trailers that long. So if we have really heavy corn, we're using a 34-foot trailer at the most. If I get a 1,000 bushels on a trailer, one, the corn has to be really heavy, so its test weight has to be high. But two, I have to have it loaded to the brim. Like loaded so, so full you couldn't even tarp it. see the seed level in the tank right there if you see the line that's where the seeds at now that you've drilled the beans what's the next process it's far I planted well some people call this a drill, it's not a drill, but some people think that it's in 15 inch rows. My uncle calls it a drill, it's a planter. What's the next process for the field? Well, hopefully it gets a rain on it. It needs a rain. These beans are planted pretty deep, but the ground is dry. I think I've got them in moisture. So really the next process is we need a rain on it. Just to level it up a little bit, soften the ground, and make sure the beans have plenty of moisture to start their lives. After that, the next pass in the field will be a sprayer. It will be for another probably month, June maybe, first week of June, we'll like to spray it again. Soybeans are very low maintenance. You put them in the ground as long as they have proper fertility in the field, you don't have to worry too much about them. We'll come back for next pass, and I might explain this a little bit more in the video. I think I should talk some more about our herbicide program and what we do to keep our fields clean. We've already had one pass out here, a residual herbicide, to offer some protection against some small seed broadleaves, which seem to be our trouble, and a little bit of grass control. We'll come back in, like I said, three to four weeks, usually usually when we start to get some weeds breaking through that next layer of spray, and we'll put down a, a powerful herbicide, so these are gonna be sprayed with Extin, which is the dicamba chemistry. Come back a third time and we'll spray our soybean fields right around the, the end of flowering the start of their reproductive so r2 and we will spray them with a fungicide fungicide insecticide and then if we really need to we'll come back with roundup i don't I'm not sure if roundup's even labeled that late but the fungicide insecticide for those of you who are curious last year we had a check strip and it was 10 bushel an acre difference to where we sprayed fungicide and insecticide where we did and dad parked it on the main street and the next day I headed to the Chiefs for Chiefs versus Packers game. Well, I hope you were going to see the Chiefs because if you did, you had a good season. Henry Lopez, you have an aggregate degree from where? Yes, I have a bachelor's degree in crop sciences from the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. Honda Fun says, how's it going? Pretty good. How are you, Honda? I got a Honda motor on my seat tender up here. Always starts. Get a phone call. Hello. Uh, just hit 32, so. Wait another 10, 15 acres. Okay. have any trippy farmer merchandise? No, I don't have any yet. Maybe someday I will. Joe says, 
Hello from Holland. Hello. I don't know if I responded to that already or not. Good for you, Joshua. I'm glad you're a Chiefs fan. Packers fans have only been heartbroken in the last few years. One hectare here costs about 18000 to 30000 U.S. dollars. Very intense cattle area. Any cattle in your area. I do all day. This is it. I watch the planner. Yesterday, I was in and out a lot. I had a lot of issues with the seed feeding into one of the row units. When I get a break here one of these days, I'll get a massive planning video vlog put together for you guys. I'm not sure how some of these people do it. They, they, they're putting videos out all the time. I don't have time. I didn't stop working. I didn't get home until like 11.15, 11.30 last night. I don't quite have time to come home and edit a video and get back up and start again. Is all of our ground work? 
guess at this point, everything has worked. We actually just worked this farm last night and this morning is our last field that hasn't been worked. We had that period last week where it was dry but really cold. So we let our field cultivators just run wild, work our entire farm. So the reason we got done planting so quickly is it warmed back up here Sunday, you know, Sunday going into Monday. It was, the corn planter was running full speed. It didn't have to wait on a field cultivator or anything. How wide is your planter and everything? This is a 40 foot planter. We've got 30 ro 32 rows on it, 15 inch spacing, planting soybeans. It can be used as a corn planter. You can lift up every other row for 30 inch rows, 16 rows, but we have a, a 60 foot planter that we plant corn with.
one night I stayed up to like all, practically all night playing soybeans. It ended up being like I planted 400 or 500 acres that day in total. We got an absolutely pounding rain the next morning, and I had to replant about 25% of those fields. It was horrible. Michael wants to know, does your exact emerge 24 row planter have hydraulic downforce? Yeah, it has individual, each row has a hydraulic downforce unit, and then the wings actually have wing downforce to help keep the weight of the center fill tanks spread out over the entire bar, as opposed to that weight just being focused on the back four tires. So each wing tire, both wing tires have more weight distributed to them. Weston says, on our farm we have a DB60 John Deere planter that plants soybeans. I love those draw bar planters, the DB series, especially the really large ones, meat, meat machines. Surprisingly, there's not very many DB planters in my specific region. Now, when I say that, that's within 20 to 30 miles of me. When you get outside of that, there are some large farms that are running DB90s, DB120s. different soils in one farm, there's a lot of headaches waiting to happen. Christian Jackson says Matt too. Well, I'm in Windsor right now, but I am from Matt too. That's where our farm is from. Demo. 
B as a 24 row with tracks. You know, the only thing I would say, Honda, that's unfortunate about that is that that 16 row high speed is only going to barely be able to outplant that 24 row non high speed. If they're wanting to sell him on it, and I know they're not trying to sell it on it, they're trying to showcase it for his viewers, I would have sent him a 60 foot one. Put the tracks on a. I mean, you can put the tracks on this planter. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. That tracks. So let's see. They they sent him a 16 demo. So a 16 row planter, 40 foot at 10 miles an hour times 5280 divided by 4360. Oh, that's definitely not right. 10 miles an hour, 40 foot width. And there's 500. 5,280 feet a mile is 2.1 million, and there's 43,560 square feet in an acre. So that is capable of, at 10 miles an hour, 48 acres an hour straight line efficiency. That's the high speed planner he's demoing. A 24 row, a 60 foot planner, let's say he can plant six and a half miles an hour with it. miles an hour on a 60 foot planter. Sorry, this is really difficult to square. 47 acres an hour. So that planter really does not gain him that much efficiency, but it does gain him tremendous precision and accuracy on his seating units. Our 24 row is a phenomenal planter. The only planter I've ever seen in my life that plants better the faster you drive it. At eight miles an hour, it does not plant. It plants like 99% singulation. At 11 miles an hour, it plants almost 100%. I've seen it hit 100% on the monitor. Blake says, on the east side of Nebraska, it's kind of choice if you want irrigation, just depends on where you are. We don't have to go far west in Mississippi. The question is, is where are you better off? Would you rather have ground that needs irrigation or not it needs irrigation? Got any snacks or beverages in here? I had some pizza a little bit ago from a monocles nearby. A little bit ago, it was like two hours. I got my water. I really don't snack much other than eat lunch. And I don't. I usually just eat lunch, and then if I get home, I eat dinner. If I, I don't eat dinner at the tractor. This is about enough water to last me all day if I don't just pound it down. I'm very big on hydration, but when I get in the tractor, I like to uh, not over drink water because then I have to stop all the time to use the restroom. It's crazy how muddy it gets up in Minnesota where he is. We need to have that big equipment. I don't know how they do it. When there's a will, there's a way. Some of the things I've seen on some of these farm channels of the stuff that happens on their farm just absolutely blows my mind. Like the level of stuck, that, I've never seen equipment stuck like they get it stuck. We don't have that exciting of terrain. Our, the exciting part about our farm ground is that it's highly productive. Paula Smith says, my son wants to know how you plant the soybeans. Well, Paula, uh, this machine right here takes care of the lion's share of the work for me. All the soybean seed, we'll wait for it to stop beeping, it likes to beep in me. All the soybean seed is stored in these two tanks that we load up top. At the bottom of these tanks, there are hoses, and the hose, each, each row unit across the back, so the unit that's planted, has a hose to it. That fan right there in the middle blows seed to every unit. When the seed gets to the unit, there is a, a plate in combination with that vacuum. Uh, sorry, you can't see the vacuum. Here, there's a vacuum. There's a vacuum on each other. That's a vacuum right there. It sucks up the seed that's been delivered from the tank through the blower 
to the unit, to the plate in the unit, there's little holes, spins it around at the control grade to determine based on how fast I'm going to plant the population or the plant density that I wanted out here for the amount of seeds I want. So I'm planting 165,000 plants per acre, which is a plant per row about every three inches, three to four inches, give or take. There's a, on this planter, you can see these chains spinning down in here, at least I think you can. There's a chain spinning. There's a hydraulic motor, a hydraulic solenoid in the back that is computerized to determine how fast I'm going and how fast it needs to spin all of this drive system to have each row unit put seed at, in the, at the right amount. Crazy seeing that planter technology. Lots of people around are still using old tech planters. Here's the one thing we'll say, Honda, and I, I will never get off of this high horse. You do not need fancy equipment to grow good crops. We have fancy, fancier equipment. We are blessed to have the ability to have this equipment. But you, do, you can grow 300 bushel corn. That's really high benchmark. You can grow massive crops with old equipment. Where the advancements have really been made is in seeding technology. Yeah, make phone call. As I'm planning, so you sit here watching. 44 acres. Well, maybe 100, 100 left, no, 80 left. I would do a couple more because we, unless we stuff into the brim, it's no longer fit in there. Are you, are you bored? It looks like you're bored. used to the beeping yet? Farmer West, in my farm we use, we are all John Deere. That's awesome. We are, with the exception of our backhoe, everything is John Deere. There's not a Deere construction dealership nearby. Alex says hi from Spain. Hi Alex.
corn, the longer season corn, we just make those picks. Yield is the yield data is one of the most important decisions of what we put on what farm. We like to have some shorter season corn and some longer season corn because even, even six degree day differences in a corn hybrid can make a big difference for the year. We could plant all 114 day corn and get an unlucky draw come July and not get the rains we need, but the 108 day corn may have gotten the rain we need. So it's kind of hedging our bets in a way by planting different ones. So our, our population doesn't really change. Most corn hybrids have flexible ears. So if you put corn out there at 32,000, the corn can adapt within a certain degree range, certain range by adjusting the ear size on the plant. <laughs> Now that's not to say you can go out there and plant 20,000 because you'll be doing yourself a disservice. You can't plant 50,000 because it'll be too much. There is a certain range. Soybeans are unlike, unlike corn. You can get away with some things. You can plant them 200,000. You can plant them 100,000. They really don't care tremendously. What is the average bushel per acre for corn on a good year? Every year is different, Blake. I answered this the other night. Last year our corn, didn't even make 200. We had a horrible year. Yields were not even close to the year prior. In 2018, which was a phenomenal year, and we've had a series of years similar to 2018, our corn crop averaged over 240 bushel per acre across our whole farm. I just found your channel not too long ago, and I gotta say, your channel has become one of my favorites, and I look forward to seeing more of your videos. Thanks, Honda. I look forward to making more. Unfortunately, everyone, farming is my full-time job. The videos are a hobby. It's nice that I can go live for you right now, but I really have to focus on the crops. You know, this is how we make our living. I, I can't go home and my editing takes so long. I can't go home every night. Like last night I got done working, 11.15. By the time I go home, I don't have, if I try to edit a video, I will literally be awake all night editing. So I have to, I have to draw somewhere when we're when we get a rain we're calling for rain tomorrow morning a good rain i will get a mega video put together because i have been recording that's my gopro i should before you're confused what that was that's my gopro this next one it'll probably be a pretty long video i've also got some awesome drone footage here's my mavic 2 zoom that's what i use to record look how neat this thing is like the wings fold out this is where the battery goes, I just don't have it in there. There's my drone. That's where all the sweet drone shots come from. Lux wants to know, ever do any boating at Lake Shelbyville? I'm more of a Lake Mattoon guy. My family has Different parts of my family have a couple different places at Lake Mattoon houses. I do know a lot of people that go to Lake Shelbyville, fantastic lake. I went there one time last year solely to use some jet skis. You can't use jet skis on Lake Mattoon. Awesome place. Clay says hello from Iowa. How's it going, Clay? Hope you're farming today. Does your area have a higher bid for a clear helium beans compared to dark helium? I, to be honest, Kevin, I haven't looked at that much there's a market for everything is that would that be like a difference in protein content or, high, or not protein oil I know that there's high oil the lake means Clay says you guys run very nice equipment thank you Clay we're very blessed to farm the ground we do with the equipment we have we're very fortunate good night from sweet interesting to follow you thanks Mikhail glad to have you it is bedtime sweet Tender's still waiting. We're going to load it here in another couple rounds if you want to hang with. When I got out of the tractor last night, I'd been in it for, I was probably in it yesterday for 14 hours, give or take, on and off. When I got out of the tractor and I was at home, I was still. I was still sitting there, like in my head, I could feel myself bouncing at the seat. Because I'm, if you could tell, like my air ride seat just slowly goes up and down. 
And I was just sitting there at home like this. In, in my head, like I wasn't at, I was just sitting on, my, on the couch or something. After a really long day, you can't see it, but I've got both my duels in like the corners of my field of view, like the, at my farthest angles. And I'll just see them. I'll see my duels when I track my duels all day. It's kind of like being in a boat all day. You get off a boat all day, you lay in bed at night, and you just feel the boat shaking. Every time it comes close to dry enough, it rains another inch here in lower Arkansas. Don't you guys have rice down there in Arkansas? Does it rain good? All you guys know is mud. Kevin said, honestly, it's only a difference for helium. Helium or hylum? Hylum color. But some markets like Vietnam consume the white hylum GMO beans in their tofu. Some places can containerize them and offer better bits. Well, there is a facility in Mattoon, and it, there's a couple facilities in the area that I know specialize in shipping to some of those co those countries out there that have specialty demands like that. I'm sure they do offer bids. The largest majority of special special bean bids in the area are not GMO. I don't even know a single organic farm in Central Illinois. That's not to say they don't exist. I just personally don't know them. To be honest with you, it's very easy to tell a soybean farm that is non-GMO or organic. Mostly non-GMO, it's full water damage. No way to control some of the weeds we have. Even a row crop cultivator is not enough. Kevin, I'm all for specialty crops. If there's a demand, we as producers should meet that demand and, and grow those crops. I don't have anything against organic farming. I don't have anything against non-GMO farming any kind of specialty crop, as long as they don't get their place in the market by trashing conventional crops. Or, you know, genetically modified, I'm playing genetically modified soybeans right now. If the opportunity was right for our farm, I'm sure we would consider organic as a massive hurdle to overcome financially with possible financial return. At the end, I better plug my iPad in.
It says Travis Farms. No, but we have a general, we, have, we share a very mutual understanding of the way the farm should operate. And as I've said numerous times, the difference between needs and wants. One of the biggest things on our list right now, uh, things we'd like to add, is a, a bigger combine. But we don't need it. Our combines do a good job. If you can't justify your actions or your decision with numbers and financial you know, financial data as to why you should be making the change you should, you really don't have any any legs to stand on in that argument. You need to have solid evidence of why you think you should change what you are, whether it's an improvement in yield, a reduction in cost, maybe a reduction in downtime, increase in efficiency. Don't just trade because you think that you need a newer one. You can plant great crops with old equipment. You can harvest great crops with old equipment. Invest in your seed. Some people are just stubborn. Oh, my dad's here. Something. I'm gonna load the planner. I'm gonna check my truck for a charger real quick. You can watch us load the planner live, but if it dies. Put a finger one up to you. What does that even mean? Get it right next to the ditch. Perfect. Took a load of the planner. You can watch it here live. Her dad might load the planner. Have fun if my iPad dies, it's because it's not charged.
Sandy out there. Good news. This is their place to tell me what to do. Like, I don't know. I need to raise the plane. Traffic. 
two combines over, two drapers, an auger wagon or grain cart, depending on what you call it, and the semis. Mark says, any major breakdowns other than that generator shaft on the corn planter? No. I was having some issues yesterday that were more minor with some blockage in my seat tubes. We usually do not have a lot of fiascos on our farm. Knock on, knock on wood somewhere. There's no wood. There's knock on something. But some of the, like I've said, some of the things I've seen happen on some of these farm YouTube channels don't even make sense. To me. I see that some of the, like I almost think that they stage some of this stuff. Splines, yeah. Well, it turns out we're supposed to grease that Honda, so it's kind of our fault, I think. We're supposed to grease that shaft. I have no clue. Can't let them have all the fun games like playing, all the fun jobs like planting soybeans. You're right, Dan. Planting soybeans is one of the easiest jobs on the farm, as long as you're planting right. Are you guys planting extended lists or liberty? That that's an extend. Yes, these are extend beans. The largest portion, except for two fields, we're trying out some enlist beans. The largest portion of our farm is extend. You know, I'm not a massive fan. Of the extend chemistry in terms of its, I don't know if I'd say safe, friendliness is a good word, the very challenging chemistry to apply to your farms. Even if you do everything right, it has issues. This stuff picks up, dicamba extend picks up in the middle of the night and travels a mile down the road. You can spray it on label and make no mistakes and you're still going to have issues. Which is unfortunate for our guys out there planting susceptible varieties, Liberty, non-GMO, Moonshine that bottle. If there was moonshine in this bottle, I wouldn't be able to see straight that time I was done. I'm back that much time of doing in rows. Nick, were those square in rows or was it a, a more elaborate field? Even square in rows on a, on a big field could take a while. <laughs> Lux says, what model JD are you driving right now? This is an 8285R front wheel assist tractor. <laughs> Not a massive tractor, but it has plenty of horsepower to pull this planter as fast as it's capable of. Our 60 foot exact emerge is on a 8310R horsepower, which is 310 horsepower. That is not enough horsepower for that planter. We, what we lack on our exact emerge planter is the power to pull as fast as, it, as it's capable of. If conditions are right, we can usually get north of 10 miles an hour on the speed. However, you get into some softer ground, some more moist ground where you're losing a lot of your power to the ground, 310 horsepower is not enough. all the equipment parked out overnight that way it gets washed off. Yeah there is a massive storm down to the southwest. That's still ages away from us. It's kind of not even really coming our way. This is backwards but the blue dot is to the east. You see, we're the east there. It's inverted because of the camera on the iPad. See, now my phone's about to die. 
pretty big storm down to the southwest of us. Slowly heading our way. My phone says 9 p.m. We still have a lot to plant, but I wouldn't mind an inch of rain for what we have planned. All this is going to need rain. This field came up into dry clods. We worked it a second time. These beans are two inches in the ground. Need this, we've got to plant soybeans, and some of them aren't even moisture. And they're calling for a lot of rain. It's crazy, and I've talked about this before. If you wait for perfect conditions, they're gone. You, perfect is not something you may be able to achieve a perfect per, perfect conditions on one field. But by the time you've waited for perfect, you've missed your opportunity to plant it good enough. video content. We are going to plant back though because there is two row closers on each, each row. So it's going to be half closed in their soybeans. We'll get to the other end. It almost looks like the bearing went out on it. And it's supposed to be a little more. Should be another piece in between there. All I have to do is I'll have to probably zip all these off. Then pop this is a very pain in the rear project. Pop this plastic part off. And then put a new bearing in it. How big are your three four big four drives? They're all three, they're all nine four sixty yards, 460 horsepower four drive tractors. Not the biggest, definitely not the smallest. Nice tractor. You have problems with your soil crusting. Only if we get a very hard rain, Michael. If it rains extremely hard, I would be kind of worried about some of these crops. We have a rotary hoe that we might use. You know, we, we try to reserve it very, very slight. We used it like two years ago, three years ago. You're a lucky dog on that field. I right know, on that fine. You think I'm not paying attention, but I'm actually always paying attention. I may not have seen that. 
Parker says we are just starting to plant in Central Illinois with a John Deere 4455 4, 4, 4, 4, 5, 4, 4, 5, by Grouse. I have a Kenzie 3600 and 8310 with a 16 row John Deere plant. Heck yeah, put the hammer down, Parker. Down here in Western Kentucky, planting corn with a John Deere 1795, 100 acre field, but takes Good crop. I heard you guys had a monstrous crop in Kentucky last year. Drove through there back in July of last year. It looked phenomenal. My wild crop looked horrible. Honda said he jinxed me. Oh, I don't believe in that. This stuff just happens. No such thing as bad luck. It's a lack of preparation. Sawyer says, hello, I'm back. Hey, Sawyer. Jared says, what is your worst fear of planting? That's not going to come up, obviously. Planting soybeans is a very low stress job. What is the latest time you've stayed up in a tractor? Uh, one time planting last year, I was up until about, I don't recall exactly, I think about four o'clock in the morning, 3.30, four o'clock planting. And maybe a little bit before that. We try not to overwork that hard. You can put late, late nights in a tractor very easily but you're really doing yourself a disservice. Unless you're guaranteed a rain the next day, you're, it's just, that's a lot of strain to put on your body. Is it impossible? No, if you want to do it, by all means do it. I know a lot of farmers like to, to work late like that, but if you're working till three o'clock in the morning, quitting and then getting up at five o'clock the next day, you're really gonna have, it's not good for your health, especially multiple days in a row, and that's extremely hard on your health. This is a very dangerous job. If you're not careful, something can go wrong very quickly. If you're not on point all the time, you can run someone over. It can cause a lot of damage to your equipment. You're lucky if you found that. If that went through the combine, that would have been bad. <laughs> oh, those bullet rotors would just chew that up. Yeah, one of our best years. I'm glad to hear it. Let someone have a good crop. My, the boss is out here doing something with a shovel. So we're going to have a chat about this. Objects like this, though, do cause the most amount of damage to a planter. We're going to move it over here. We're going to look at it. It may end up just being me watching him do it. So I'll be back, folks. at some point in time. I up the tension on the, sp the cleaning spring. Wait, she's back. What are you saying about me? You guys aren't allowed to have fun here without me. 
but we're just going to run it with one for now. They'll probably go get another one at some point. The bearing's completely out of it. Actually, the first time that's ever happened on this planter. Still a pretty young planter. If we get rain, it doesn't matter if the beans are closed over with dirt or not, they'll come up. Yeah, Tyler, some things, that probably would have caused some issues. Pieces of metal do the most damage. If you get like a, a real piece of metal in a combine, that just tears the rotor up. What's the smallest tractor you own? Says Jerry. Well, the smallest tractor we own, do our lawnmowers count? We have some John Deere 6430 utility tractors. Those are pretty small, but they're still relatively it's not a lawn tractor, it's a utility sized tractor. So I'm sure a lot of small farms or farms that have a use for something that has power takeoff, but a larger you know, device like spreading feed or uh, grinding feed would use something like that. We have an old 4520. We don't use it for anything. We use it for one thing actually. We keep our corn heads in a barn. We don't have carts for them. We use the 4520 to get them out because it's the only tractor we have that is has a low enough clearance because it doesn't have a cab, but enough hydraulic power to the two-point hitch to be able to pick the corn heads up off the ground. We have an old uh, farm all H tractor. Not, it's not restored or anything, it's just an old tractor. Good afternoon, Alan. Guess we can take you out. Hey, what I don't know won't hurt me. We all have any hydraulic downforce. This is just airbag. The exact merge planner has all factory gear hydraulic downforce. Christo says, hi from South Africa. It's always nice to watch your videos. I am a farmer myself. Our planting season start at the end of April doing wheat, barley, oats, and canola. Keep up the videos. Thank you, I appreciate that. I cannot get over how neat it is to be able to see around the world the differences in farming, the crops we grow, how we grow the same crops differently, and how our climate's different. It's really fascinating. You know, even though I'm very familiar with this type of farming, growing corn and soybeans in the corn belt, you know, there's crops that I, watching other people farm and put small grains in the ground, other grasses, is just as intriguing to me as it is for you guys that don't get experience this type of farming. Says 100 bushel an acre on winter wheat if you time your fungicides correctly don't miss anything and then you can come back in with double crop soybeans and if the year is right you can get 40 or 50 bushel beans that's a pretty good return my largest jd is a 405 to our cab hey that's probably a pretty nice little tractor it's got a cab on it is that your utility lawn tractor Not enough, Landon. Is that pure plastic? I'm not, what are you talking about? That closing wheel? There's a metal bearing in it, and then some metal bolts, of course. But other than that, it's plastic. It's dense enough, though, that it could cause some issues. run 
the John Deere Drapers, uh, the 600 series flex drapers, and they're actually fantastic about typically avoiding rocks. We do have to watch out for them. I believe I missed a comment here earlier. Someone asked if there's rocks out here, if we run a rock picker. This farm, if you find a rock out here other than a stray small one occasionally, we found the average size rock you find in this farm is like big enough that I couldn't pick it up. It's, this is a boulder farm. But they're so deep, none of them are on the topsoil anymore. We farm on the glacial moraine, one of the glaciers that comes up from the north years, you know, eons ago. And right in our area is where the glacier did a lot of receding, but also receding through here. So it did a, there's a lot of glacial till right at the moraine where it stopped many times, or, you know, where a majority of it stopped. So we farm some extremely productive soil. We also have some very variable soils, rocky soils. You know, as many of you know, a lot of this very productive soil is that way because of, over the years, it's grown into grass. Glaciers came through, basically leveled everything, you know, rinse, rinse wash, repeat. And over time, it's built the soil up to be extremely productive. We've been here for a while, but we're only a speck of dust on a beach in this world. Honda, we run two combines with eight-row corn heads. So we can take them down the road. They're an absolute hassle. They're so an eight-row corn head, 20 foot wide on the front of the combine. There is room. Most of our roads in this area are friendly to farm vehicles, to where you can there's areas to get over. I would really like to make a transition to 12-row folded corn heads at some point in time because they're only six rows wide when they're folded. air hose on a header no Tyler if you're talking about on a drapers no we don't run that air reel just a sickle and a, a draper obviously the conveyor and the reel the regular mechanical reel that was one of the most Really, one of the nicest upgrades we've made in the last handful of years was switching to the to a draper style platform for cutting soybeans. They are light years better than a standard auger driven header. Just the sheer loss or reduction in loss from these, you could just dump beans out of those drapers and that would get them all to the combine. Very little loss in the field from cutting. Deer combines you run. Right now we have a S670 and a 9670. And considering making some changes to that, we've had it for a few years now. Do our drapers have the built-in trailers? No, they don't. They're just 30-foot drapers. They have, I think they're underfirth trailers, maybe. Does the wheel that came off affect your planning? Yes, it does affect my planning. After the true V opener cuts open the soil, so we have a no-till filter down here. I guess I need to find you one. A little bit better view. You really can't tell that well. So up front is the no-till filter. It puts the first channel in the ground. It starts the furrow. Behind it is the true V opener that cuts a perfect furrow. Basically forms that furrow better for the seed to be placed right after the true V opener comes through. There's a seed tube immediately following, like adjacent. There's no, there's no gap. The seed tube is there, delivers the seed, and then after the seed is in that tube, there, each row has a row closing unit on each side, a closer, it's just a rubber wheel. Some people use spiked wheels, packing wheels, there's all different stuff. But we run two closing wheels, one on each side. They both pinch in to help close that furrow and seal the seed over. 
it's not ideal to have one hook on. I, you can adjust the tension on those row cleaning units, the row closing, the leaves in row cleaning units. You can adjust the tension on the row closing units with a spring back, so I up the tension on it a little bit so it has a little bit more force on the one side that's working. But there's soybeans, they'll be all right. We're gonna, we'd rather just keep running and keep planning as opposed to waiting for someone to be able to bring me a new one. But that's just not something we're prepared for. Especially if we need a rain, if we get a rain, you know, the soybeans will come up if they're on the soil, on top of the soil. And well, we run an S7 semi. Those 7 series combines, they are so nice. I really like to have a 7 series, or at least a I like to have an 80 or a 90 series, so the, the 13.5 liter power trains. A little bit more productivity. Ugh. Man, we're just cutting through this field right now. Time flies. on the Gen 4 displays? Well, that's a good question. So I'm running a, I don't know if this is a, a Gen 2, maybe, is this a Gen 2? It would be nice to have everything all in one location. Let me just be sorry, right here, yours. See, I have to control all of my tractor stuff from so my hydraulics. Everything tractor side is controlled here. Whereas all of my planning and auto steer is controlled to this monitor. If I understood correctly, the Gen 4 would run everything, which would be very nice to operate out of one screen. I don't like having to use two screens. See, there's proof. 385 hours. Again, though, at what point is what you, you know, some of these upgrades, are they worth the money? Is it going to make me, you know, be any better of a farmer than I am with the older technology? I don't know. If you're looking for somewhere to spend your money and that would help your operation, then do it. I do look forward, though, at some point in time, and it may not be this year, may not be 10 years from now, but I look forward to the time when I get to try out some true set tillage equipment that you can control all of your tillage through your tractor side. You can adjust your depth. You can adjust your gang angles on discs. I think that'd be a really neat tool to have. You guys get tired of hearing the engine roaring? soybeans on this farm for just about as long as I've been alive. Lots of change over time. What did I go to college for? Crop Sciences, University of Illinois. Is a is a degree in higher education required for farming? No, but it's an investment I wanted to make it myself. If, you know, if for some reason something ever went wrong on the farm or the farm economy changed to a point where you know we could not compete or produce against some of these other farms, it's nice to have 
education as a tool in your toolbox. And the one thing higher education does provide is a different type of thinking. You know, it teaches you a certain set of skills. Now, I'm not saying it's the, a competitive set of skills with what you learn from being on the farm. This is a vastly different world than being on the school. Hey, Landon, how are you doing?
I guess the second time. We're going to plant our second time because fingers crossed, I hope not, but we usually have to replant something. You never know what's going to happen. And if we're replanting, statistically speaking, we planted a lot more extend acres, we're going to have to replant and extend more. It's a journeyman tool and die maker with 35 years of trade. I admire your family working the farm. I enjoy the continuity. Thank you very much, Stephen. I appreciate that. It takes all different types to make the world go round. Farmers help feed the world, but we wouldn't be who we are and would be as productive as we are without the help of every single person in the process that makes our job easier. Even coming all the way down to you. You know, we interact in ways, although you don't see it at face value, we couldn't do what we do without you, and you couldn't do what you do without us. We all rely on each other to make this world go around. 35 foot headers, no, we just run 30 foot headers, 30 foot drapers, flex drapers. Absolutely phenomenal machines. I could rave about them for years. I'll talk about them more, maybe come harvest time. I don't want to waste all my educating content now. I'll just say that when the, when the 600 series flex drapers first came out, we demoed one, we demoed one, and we had two combines in the field. We got one running the standard or the older auger style Hydro Flex Draper, and then we had one demoing the Flex Draper. And you could sit there and watch, you could watch the difference in the feeding, just listening to the combines, the auger, the Hydro Flex Drapers, or just Hydro, Hydro Flex Headers. You could hear that they all send all the beans in at once, you hear the combine groan as it all went through at once, and the the drapers, on the other hand, nice, smooth feeding, no issues. The cut quality was better. The grain loss was significantly better in terms of less grain loss. And so, after we demoed that that first one in the same field, we said, okay, we're taking, you know, we're keeping this. We're about, you know, we're going to buy it off you. Trade our other head in. Find us another one because we want to. They were that good. And within a day of running them, we decided we wanted. I'm not saying that like it's a, it was a, a big purchase for us, you know, a very considerable investment in equipment, but they're that good. Honda, is your truck a gas or a diesel? Well, my truck's not back there. I drive the truck that was on the sea tender, the black 2500 GMC. It is a diesel, 6.6 .6 liter Duramax. Have you seen any 20 or 48 row planters near you? One farmer here has a has three of them in northern Illinois. Wow. No, there's no, I've never seen one in person. Never seen a 48 row planter. I know a farmer to the northwest of here, up in the Springfield area, one of the, I assume, one of the largest, if not the largest farmer in the state of Illinois. They run one, at least one 48 row planter. Those things are absolutely awe inspiring to run, see run. I saw a post on Twitter where a large farmer over the Iowa area had bought a new 48 row exact emerge planter. Woo! It's expensive. I don't even know if you can get enough horsepower to tractor and pull that thing 10 miles an hour. Are the ethanol plants open near you? But make a difference in the prices if they stay rolled back. We really don't deal with that many ethanol plants directly. Now, everything is involved and intertwined. It does affect our basis in the, in the short, medium, and long term. Even if an ethanol plant is not near us, a lot of times that affects different rail bits, different grain bits across you know, local, regional uh, elevators. The largest manufacturer processing facility in our area for corn and soybeans is in Decatur, Illinois. So it's uh, northwest of here, about 40, 40 miles. And I don't believe they make ethanol. They just they process corn and soybeans. I don't know if they just crush the soybeans or what they do. I'm sorry, we've never hauled there, personally. A lot of local farmers, you know, within a couple miles, you know, within two hours radius, people drive there. A lot of grain also gets sent down um, down to the river, Mississippi River, very large 
quantity of grain to sit down in Mississippi as a, as a way to get it down to the ports. Other people hop up in, hop, just conveniently hop in the rail car. They load rail cars heading south to the Gulf down there to Louisiana as well to load you know, freighters going over to uh, you know, western, kind of eastern countries. A lot of grain gets sent to the southeast down towards you know, Georgia and the Carolinas. We have a lot of demand for feed corn and feed beans. Chickens, pork, things of that sort of hogs. Where did I drive through when I came to Kentucky? You know, I don't remember exactly, Nick. It's been a while. When I was the passenger in the car. I was headed from... I was headed to Florida. Atlanta, actually. I was headed to Atlanta. I stayed the night in Atlanta. So if that tells you anything. Your name is Lix. I've been reading that as Lux this whole time. Like Lux, like measurement of light. Lix, I'm sorry. The one thing I will comment more about the all is that you know, we're in unprecedented times as farmers. We've really been relying on the corn side of the subsidizing of the ethanol industry. It's not profitable. People are not making money converting corn into ethanol and blending it into fuel. Other than the government mandates, the demand is purely synthetic. And when the price of oil is as low as it is, you know, it's it's tough for us to compete with the oil industry. We don't have the amount of weight they do, financially, politically. And then you also have to consider other long-term factors, you know, on the food side or the fuel side of things. You have the prominence of electric vehicles, you know, companies like Tesla making fantastic products. I'm not going to knock any of these people. Make, you know, I'd love to drive a car like that. But, you know, lessening our dependence on fossil fuels in terms of fueling our cars, that's one of, you know, that's a massive portion of corn demand. If I was shooting from the hip, I would say that you're going to see, unless you see the subsidizing of corn increase, you're going to see more people in soybeans. I mean, so when countries, when countries develop, you know, these countries that are coming from a poor status, the poor wealth, they're developing better lives for their citizens. One of the first things on their list of demands is protein. Protein, established civilizations want protein. You know, it's the building block of life. Countries want proteins. They want. They don't want cheap carbs. That corn is a cheap carb, a fantastic crop, one of the most efficient grain-producing crops you know the world has ever seen. But you know, people are getting tired of sugars, and they want proteins. Beans equal biodiesel. Yep. Yep. We use we use biodiesel on our farm. Hello from South Africa. South Africa. Hello, Wessel. How you doing? What's the weather like in South Africa right now? We kind of need to travel over there one day. There's just so many parts of the world I'd like to see. <laughs> Actually, the highest on my list to see, or one of the things I think would be fascinating would be Australia. Go to Australia and check out the farms there. They farm, the, the scale of farming in Australia is magnificent. Or, you know, it's an <coughs> About to switch fields, so I'm about to go. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you, Nick. Safe travels. Hopefully you have no inconveniences on your way. Hope you don't need a single car. That's crazy. It's odd. Like, 
cooling off. We're just getting into the, it's warming up here. We're, we're approaching summer in the next month. High today here is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. At the just above room temperature. done at the moment. The price we get on is so competitive that it's really hard to go ahead and purchase our own sprayer, but it's really high on my list because there's very good savings to be had from acquiring your own chemical. The upcharge on chemical from these co-ops and other production companies is relatively massive. If you go price, you know, bulk chemical, there's some cases where you're going to be saving gross saving on chemical alone of you know, $20 an acre and then spray cost and then the opportunity you know if you have a sprayer you can do custom work with someone. The sprayer is one of the most scalable pieces of equipment on the farm. Oxbow seed corn harvesters. 
I agree. RX is a bit pricey. You can buy two versatile Delta tracks for the price of one RX over here. Yeah, I think they're a little outlandish with their price. Is their product good? Yes. Does, does everyone, you know, versatile makes a good product? Yeah, of course. Does Case make a good product? Yeah. Fent? Yeah. But I, the, the prices on this equipment is outlandish. And you've got a lot of people saying, oh, you know, we farmers, you know, have a hard time making money. We're having a hard time doing this, doing that. And they've got quad tracks in their barn. I'm not quite sure I believe them or they need to rearrange their priorities a little bit. Versatile, yikes. <laughs> I, I know a handful of people who would have responded like that, Lex. I personally would not run a versatile. I run a case. I don't know if I run a versatile. Who brings you food? Must get hungry, bounce around all day. Well, today, we kind of got the whole crew just hanging around. They're gone now. We had a field pole later over here working ahead of me a little ways. We were reworking this bean ground twice. It was a little plotty. So my dad and one of my uncles were here just hanging out with the seat tender of the trucks. And they ran and got food for everyone here. Usually we've got one person floating around when we're planning because we have to have a seat person and there's you're always going to have a little bit of time. You know, you fill up the planter, you're good for a couple hours. So that person has time to run an errand. So if we have to sit for food, that's usually who does it. Whoever's in charge of seed that day is in charge of getting the food. And, you know, on occasion I bring my own food. I rise. I haven't really been that motivated to do that this year. Brown should probably do oxbow, is why I asked. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're good equipment. Just never seen one here. Ninety percent of the sprayers in our area are either rogators, deer, deer R series sprayers, or Hagies. But a Hagie is also a deer too. They the Hagies own my deer. No commercial outfits run Hagies. They either run deer or rogator. Rogator is in a challenger. says, I will buy a case for Versatile when I die. Are you saying that you'd rather die than buy one of those? I just don't think the red looks as good as the green. The John Deere green is just pretty, pretty green. says, what type of combines do you have? Are they track red tires? Uh, John Deere S670 and a John Deere 9670 STS. A little bit older combines. They're both wheeled. We really don't have any for tracks. They are four-wheel drive combines. We, don't, we do not have the soil conditions here to need, to really need tracks. Most people at best will run the LSW, the, the super wide tires, if that. Most people just run duels on their combines. I know maybe two or three farmers, and I know a lot of farmers. I know two or three farmers that have tracks on their combine. And with hard ground, if you get a four-wheel drive combine stuck, it was too wet for you to be out there. It's as simple as that. Those things can just claw through the mud. Wessel's logging off for the night. Thanks for tuning in. That's a late night, midnight. They're all good as long as they're running. That's true, Stephen. Nick says, if you rent a new 9620RX and a good 40-foot field cultivator, I would come run it for a week or two for free. Well, if you bought a 9620RX and you put a 40 foot field cultivator on it, you'd be doing yourself a disservice. You need a 55 to 60 foot field cultivator on something that big. If that was the case, you come run the planter, I'll run the, the quad track. Perfect. You can't be giving your help for free like that.
Field coordinating is one of the most relaxing jobs. Really not a whole lot you can screw up. Really not a lot you can screw up here either as long as you're paying attention to your monitor. things that 
may be second nature to me or things that I consider that, that I need to understand that my viewer may not know. So I have a lot to talk about here in the next few months. The crop will be out of the ground. That cornfield I've talked about, the first one we planted, I haven't had an opportunity to get out and check on it. Should be an inch out of the ground by now. We've had some very favorable weather the last few weeks, or the last few, last few days. I can't wait to explain a little bit more about the process to you. There's a lot of complex stuff involved in farming. I see a rain way on the horizon. close to the end. Peace out.